What's up guys and welcome back to the video series Attacking 0365 with Team Filtration. This is going to be part two and in today's portion we're going to be talking about the enumeration module specifically. In part one we set up the JSON configuration file needed in order to use most of the modules within Team Filtration. So in this part two we'll take a look at the enumeration module within Team Filtration. The enumeration module is your typical starting point for most engagements where you actually need to identify valid email accounts within an organization's tenant. So within the enumeration module of Team Filtration, you have six arguments that you can provide. The bottom three arguments are going to tell Team Filtration what validation option we want to use in order to take an email address, validate that the email address actually exists within the tenant, and then move on. So the three options are validate MSUL, validate Teams, and validate login. And as I said, each of these reference a method of validating the email. We'll go into depth uh, about those methods in a bit, but first let's talk about the top three arguments you can provide. So the dash dash domain arguments tells team filtration what domain you would like to target. The domain is typically the main domain attached to the tenant we are going to be attacking. Then you have the dash dash usernames argument, which allows you to specify a list of emails to team filtration that you would like to validate. And this is particularly handy if you already done a bunch of open source information gathering and already have a list of emails that you would like to validate. Then you have the dash dash dehashed option, and this allows you to pull emails attached to the domain that you provide with dash dash domain from the breach database lookup service dehashed. In order to use that option, you do need to provide the dehashed API key and email in the configuration file, as this option does directly communicate with the dehashed API. So the modules within Team Filtration can be activated simply by referencing the arguments for the module, in this case, dash dash enum. But in order to use the module itself, you need to provide two key arguments to Team Filtration. The first one being the configuration file, so dash dash config, and then the path to your JSON configuration file on disk. And then you have the dash dash out path. Now dash dash out path should be a reference to either an existing folder or a non-existing folder in a valid path on your system. The dash dash out path basically tells Team Filtration where to store all the data gathered throughout this engagement. And I like to think of the out path argument more as defining sort of your workspace. So this would be per client or maybe even per unique domain attached to a tenant for each client if the client has multiple Office 365 tenants. Now with all the arguments explained, let's actually take a look at using Team Filtration. So first off, we got to specify the Team Filtration application. We got to provide the configuration file using the dash dash config argument. So there's my configuration file in JSON format, then then out path. For this, I'm just going to give it a folder name. So my current client and Team Filtration will check if this folder exists. If it does not exist, it will create the folder. And since I'm running out of the desktop path of my system, it will simply create the my current client folder in the desktop folder. Then I'm going to specify dash dash enum for using the enumeration method. I'm going to specify dash dash domain and then my target domain. Now for demonstration purposes and testing within this video, I'm going to be using my own dummy domain called legitcorp.net, which is a pre-configured Azure tenant that I have stood up and owns. Now, as you can see, we forgot to provide it a validation option. So Team Filtration will actually complain that please select the validation option, but we can see that my current uh, client folder has been created as well as the Team Filtration database file. So we need to provide it. So we need to provide the validation option. Let's use validate login. So, so after providing it a validation option, it's going to ask us for the email syntax. And that's because we haven't provided Team Filtration an actual list of emails that we would like to validate and then move into the database. So instead, Team Filtration is going to give us a set of options for the email syntax. So what happens after you provide the infiltration the email syntax is that it's going to reach out and pull down a list of statistically likely usernames matching that syntax and then basically brute force your way to valid username. It's using a fork of the statistically likely usernames repo from inside trust. Huge shout out to that. And just based off this with sheer brute force, you can validate a ton of emails within this tenant without ever doing open source information gathering. Now for this specific tenant, the email syntax is the first one, uh, first name dot last name. And I'm just going to fire this and I'm going to explain what is actually going on. So using the dash dash validate login method, Team Filtration will actually attempt to enumerate uh, email accounts within a tenant by attempting to log in. While this is very noisy, the client can see a bunch of invalid login attempts for accounts that doesn't exist and then suddenly accounts that do exist. This is the most bulletproof way to actually confirm that the accounts exist within the tenant. 
as you can see the only valid email so far is going to be bruce wayne and that's because i don't have that many um so as the infiltration says this method will definitely produce logins and there also are key sort of uh, edge cases that can be produced by this uh, validation method so one edge case might be that during this validation process you actually guess the password correctly for one of the users in that case, the infiltration has built-in logic for this and we'll put that account into the valid accounts column in the database and you could move straight on to exfiltration with that account. Another edge case is that if you're validating accounts now and then you're moving into spring, you have already sprayed a series of accounts not so long ago. So the infiltration will keep track of this when you move into the spray module. The infiltration will tell you, hey, it's only been like 15 minutes since you actually attempted to log into these accounts because your validation method used logins and therefore you have to wait or you have to give me the force argument in order for me to proceed with the spray even though you might lock out accounts. And that's some of the edge cases that are built in with this validation method specifically. Another validation method, it's the MSO validation method. Now, what this method is, is actually just replaying a single post request against the logon microsoft.online.com endpoint. It's been fairly known to be abused, and after a couple of hundred of emails, you will start to see false positives using this method, so I would not recommend it. But it's simply doing a post request to get credential type, and it's sending in the email, and then based on the response, we are trying to determine if it exists. So it's sort of recreating the, the beginning of a normal login flow if you were to do it from the browser. So you said this username may be incorrect. This is what we're looking for. The validation method that I absolutely do recommend using is the validate teams option. Now the validate teams option will require that you provide that Azure dummy account that we created in part one, because it will actually log in, authenticate to the Skype endpoint, and then use the feature within the teams API to look up external accounts to see if they exist. This method is extremely quick, it's highly accurate, and it works for most tenants. There is a configuration step you can do within your tenant in order to make this less effective, but it's still currently by far the most effective way to validate email accounts within a tenant. Now, I can't demonstrate this method for you because the dummy account I'm using is created within the same tenant that I'm performing the lookups to, and therefore the accounts aren't external and it won't work. So that's a pro tip for you as well. If you're testing this out, the dummy account cannot be used to look up external accounts within, your same ten within the same tenant because they're not external accounts. So I won't be demonstrating that. Now, in order for me to uh, have some users to play with in the next portions of this video series, I need to put some valid usernames into my database. So I'm going to be using the validate login option yet again, but with the usernames argument, I'm going to give it a text file with valid usernames from my intendant that I just exported to cheat. And then I'm going to uh, see if I can get myself some more valid users. Let's see how quick this goes. Here we go. Now we have a bunch of valid users that we can use in part three of this video series that's coming out next week. That's for spraying. And that's it for part two in attacking O365 with infiltration. If you did enjoy the content, consider leaving a like, uh, subscribing and commenting and all that fun stuff. I deeply appreciate it. Have a great rest of your day.